WWE 2K22 Universe Mode, episode number 46. We are live from the Royal Farms Arena in the heart of Baltimore, Maryland for yet another edition of Monday Night Raw. And the road to Judgment Day is going to be paved here tonight. In your main event, the WWE Championship Eliminator kicks off with the first of two matches featuring the Viper, Randy Orton, and the Scottish Psychopath, Drew McIntyre. The winner of this matchup will meet the winner of next week's battle between RVD and Mustafa Ali at Judgment Day. But this old rivalry is going to be renewed right here tonight, live in Baltimore on Monday Night Raw. But we kick things off with another advertised contest. The Blackheart of NXT has officially joined the main roster as of last week's attack on Pete Dunne, and Champa is in action right here, right now. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, weighing in at 201 pounds, Tommaso Chir! We want to take you back to last week, right here on Monday Night Raw. Pete Dunne was getting set with a matchup against the modern-day Maharaja Jinder Mahal, but as the Intercontinental Champion was making his way to the ring, there you saw the black heart of NXT, Tommaso Ciampa, rearing his head and making his debut on Raw for the first time in several years, officially joining the main roster and issuing a big-time beatdown on the bruiser weight of the WWE. Ciampa making his mark. Clearly, that man is on the hunt for the Intercontinental Championship of the World. And a victory here tonight against a man who has been nothing short in the winning ways, Dolph Ziggler, ever since Ziggler made his return on the Raw after SummerSlam. A win for either of these men could absolutely put them in line as the next challenger for the Intercontinental Championship. Champa making his mark last week. He's made appearances on Raw and SmackDown in the past before, but has spent most of his WWE career in NXT as a former NXT Tag Team Champion, a former NXT World Champion. Tommaso Ciampa is one of the heart and souls of that brand for many, many years. Now joining the main roster though, and has clearly got new sights set. And the first thing on Tommaso Ciampa's list is the goal that the Bruiserweight holds around his waist, the Inner Continental Championship. But this man, the show off of the WWE, may have his eyes on the same exact prize. This is going to be a great matchup to kick us off. And his opponent from Hollywood, Florida, weighing in at 218 pounds, Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler made his return after a stint in NXT on the roll after SummerSlam over a month ago. Since then, he's got victories over John Morrison as well as Apollo Crews. Ziggler's been in the winning ways since coming back to Monday Night Raw. Will that continue here tonight against the Blackheart Tommaso Ciampa? This should be a great matchup between these two competitors. And as we mentioned, the very interesting caveat. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute here. Tommaso Ciampa, Ziggler, turn around! And Tommaso Ciampa continuing to show his true colors, not waiting for the bell. Well, there it is. Attacking Dolph Ziggler while he's making his entrance here. Ciampa looking to get the upstart in this matchup. They're looking to gain the upper hand over the show off as we are underway. Whether you like the way we started this matchup or not, with our first contest here tonight, which will be a great night of in-ring action on Monday Night Raw. And Ziggler trying to fight back here, obviously caught off guard by Tommaso Ciampa. Then again, I'm sure he knew and is aware of what Ciampa's actions were against Pete Dunne last week. I'm sure Ziggler has came prepared for any means necessary here tonight. But no matter what, this should be a fight between these two competitors, and I'm sure the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne has got his eyes locked on this matchup, and especially has his eyes locked on Ciampa. A similar nice DDT there to take Tommaso Ciampa down. This guy's going one-on-one. -on -one. This isn't an official number one contenders matchup, but it absolutely could instigate the winner into getting a future Intercontinental Championship matchup. The Bruiser Ray Pete Dunn is hot off the heels of Extreme Rules. Back on August the 7th, we retained the championship over the Prince Finn Balor. And again, it was last week Pete Dunn was set for that grudge matchup against the modern day Maharaja Jinder Mahal. Those two men have issues with each other dating back prior to SummerSlam. 
But as Pete Dunne again was making his way to the ring, Tommaso Ciampa showing up out of nowhere. Wasn't even scheduled to be on Monday Night Raw anytime soon to make his debut, but clearly Ciampa marking his own path here in the WWE, ambushing Pete Dunne. And as we mentioned, setting his sights on the goal that the Bruiserweight has been carrying around since the SummerSlam pay-per-view back in June. Pete Dunne has been on a roll ever since he made his official main roster debut. All the way back on April the 11th of the Backlash pay-per-view at Ziggler. Wait a minute here, Super Kick may have just knocked the lights out of Ciampa. And the cover he goes, but Ciampa gets the shoulder up. One of Ziggler's signature maneuvers there. That super kick right to the jaw, but it's not enough to keep Champa down yet. Gotta give credit where it's due, whether you like Tommaso Champa or not. He's a tough SOB inside of that ring. He has been in wars in NXT. And a similar move to Dolph Ziggler. And we normally see the show off use that Famouser driving Ziggler into the canvas below. Tommaso Champa looking to continue the beatdown on Ziggler here. Ziggler's trying to hang in this fight. I'm sure he feels that he had Tommaso Ciampa in a predicament here. He could be going for super kick number two. Tune up the band this time is Dolph, and he hits it flush. And Tommaso Ciampa's momentum about to get derailed right here, but no. Ciampa able to squeak the shoulder up. Dolph Ziggler after two super kicks, not enough to put the black card away. And it's very shocking here. Ziggler, not one, but two. Super kicks to the jaw of Tommaso Ciampa, and that second one with that buildup in the corner. A little bit of the sweet chin music, a la the HBK Shawn Michaels. But Ziggler knows he's got Ciampa in her pick, but Ciampa's trying to wake up here. He knows that Ziggler smells blood in the water, and the Black Hearts got to fight now more than ever. Whether you like Ciampa or not, we know he's got the capabilities to get it done inside the ring, and bang, right there may have just been the exclamation point on this contest. And Ziggler somehow able to get the shoulder up. And I'm sure if Ziggler had not been in the momentum in the driver's seat over the last few minutes and was able to do more, or I should say had more damage on him by the way of Champa, Champa most likely would have got that victory there, but Ziggler was the aggressor for the last few moments of this matchup. Champa is playing catch up right now. Both these men surviving a couple of signature maneuvers here, but Dolph Ziggler is clearly in a predicament and worse for wear as the Blackhearts got him right where he wants him. And now the beatdown going to be issued by Tommaso Ciampa here. Still to come tonight on Monday Night Raw, as we mentioned, live here from Baltimore. The WWE Championship Eliminator It's going to start tonight, continue next week, and we're going to have the finals at the Judgment Day pay-per-view. In the month of September, we're going to see Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre later tonight here on Monday Night Raw. An old rivalry renewed between those two men. And the next week here on Raw, it's going to be Mustafa Ali taking on the whole damn show, Rob Van Dam, for the first time ever. And the winners of those two matches are going to meet, meet each other at the Judgment Day pay-per-view with an opportunity for the WWE Championship on the line. And also still to come tonight, as advertised and announced last week, we're going to announce the WWE Championship matchup for Judgment Day. Of course, all day, Austin Theory won the championship at Extreme Rules eight nights ago in his first championship, or should say his second championship defense. Will be coming up at Judgment Day. Theory just retained the title last week in an absolutely exhausting contest against the franchise John Cena. We're going to touch more on that later tonight, but Champa into the cover here. We're going to put Ziggler away, and Ziggler, notice how... Dolph Ziggler there, barely able to drag his shoulder off the canvas. Ziggler, oh! Tried rolling a Champa there, but Champa just caught it with that sharp elbow. It's Ziggler now. A mat technician, that amateur wrestling background for Dolph, able to muscle Champa in the, into the position there! And Ziggler, third super kick, but Tommaso Champa absorbs the blow! A couple of blows to Dolph Ziggler, followed up with the knee, and now the beat down from the black heart. How the hell did Tommaso Ciampa just absorb that third super kick in this contest? And now issuing yet another beatdown on the show off here. Yeah, like it or not, this has been a great matchup to kick us off here on Monday Night Raw. Ziggler may be in trouble. Tommaso Ciampa looking to wrap things up inside the square circle. And he does. And whether you like the actions of this man or not, the Blackheart 
It is official main roster debut here tonight. Picking up the victory over Dolph Ziggler. And Ziggler was the aggressor throughout, I'd say, the majority of this contest. Almost had Tommaso Ciampa on a few occasions, but in the end, the black heart right there was able to put Dolph Ziggler away. Tommaso Ciampa. Wait, 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 wait a minute. The Intercontinental Champion Pete Dunne's in the ring. Tommaso Ciampa better watch his neck because Pete Dunne's coming after him. The blood spilling over from last week's Monday Night Raw. Ciampa had knocked out Pete Dunne. Pete Dunne's out for retribution here tonight. Tommaso Ciampa hot off the heels of this contest. The Bruiserweights looking to issue a beatdown. Win, lose, or draw on the black card here tonight. Well, this is already about more than the Intercontinental Championship between these two men. It's about beating the hell out of each other, at least in the mind of the Bruiserweight. As Ciampa, a stomp to the back of the neck. The Bruiserweight with a measure of revenge. What is next for these two competitors? We are back inside the Royal Farms Arena here in Baltimore, Maryland as Monday Night Raw continues with a little bit of women's division action. And in action on Raw for the very first time, the Warrior of the Sun, Saray. She made her main roster debut on Saturday night's main event back on August the 6th in a losing effort to Rhea Ripley. But Saray with a big opportunity here tonight as she's set to go one-on-one -on -one with the WWE Women's Champion of the World, the Empress of Tomorrow. She retained her championship at Extreme Rules and the reign of Asuka continues to roll on as the champ is in the house. And from Osaka, Japan, the Raw Women's Champion, Asuka! From winning the championship by cashing in Money in the Bank, back at SummerSlam over Shotzi, to retaining it the next night on Raw over Casey Catanzaro, and then to retaining it this past Sunday, excuse me, eight nights ago on Sunday night, August the 7th, at Extreme Rules in the Triple Threat matchup against Bianca Belair and Shotzi. It has been several months. Asuka has been in a roll, and the role continued at Extreme Rules in Seattle. But will it continue here tonight? Asuka has been dominant over the women's division. Most recently, as we mentioned, that Triple Threat victory at Extreme Rules. This is a very interesting matchup and opportunity here for the Warrior of the Sun Saray. As we mentioned, she was unsuccessful in her main roster debut against Rhea Ripley. But we know the heart of that young woman from NXT. And with a big opportunity here tonight against Asuka and the women's champion. Of course, the title's not on the line, but if you beat the champion, you got to think a championship opportunity may be in the near future. Monday Night Raw rolls on and what's going to be already a great night of action here from Baltimore. And Saray immediately taking the champion off her feet with the drop kick. Tries going for the shot there, but we know how, again, dominant Asuka has been as of late. I'm not sure if any woman in the women's division right now is going to be able to take the Empress down at this current moment. Saray possibly could still be feeling some of the effects of Saturday Night's main event of her debut match against Rhea Ripley. Of course, it wasn't just the win for Rhea Ripley, but the carnage continued after the bell. And Miss Brutality herself laid out the Warrior of the Sun at ringside. Ram your into the steel steps. Obviously a message sent on that night by Rhea Ripley to the rest of the women's division on Saray's behalf. But regardless, both of these women have had about a week, over a week, to heal from Saturday night's main event and extreme rules. So hopefully they're coming in at the closest they can be to 100% in this contest. But Saray with some nice offense there. On the Empress of Tomorrow looking to pick up the upset here over the women's champion. But... A one count. Not enough to keep the champion down just yet. You know how tough Asuka is inside of that ring. We mentioned her winning streak over the last month and change. It's Owen going for the leg drop there. Possibly a Hurricane Rana, but Asuka sidesteps it. And now Asuka here with a hip attack on Saray. And that may be all already in this contest, but Saray gets the shoulder up. Empress of Tomorrow not fooling around here tonight, pulling out the best offense here, looking to make a statement on the Warrior of the Sun's behalf. It's the race hanging in there with a nice shot there on the Women's Champion. She takes her off her feet again. Double stomp. 
She's looking good. Kick takes the champion down. Asuka's down. Soraya's got to take advantage here. She's continuing the offense. And look at this. The Warrior of the Sun headed to the top rope. A big time maneuver could give her the upset victory here. Asuka's down. Go to the cover. Go to the cover. Into the air she goes. Oh, but Asuka gets the shoulder up. Man, what a win it would be for that young woman if she can pick up the victory here tonight. What oh, a nice forearm there. Not able to put Asuka away yet. She's going to continue the offense. This is the smart strategy here for the opposing woman of the Empress tonight. Oh, but Asuka just landing on her feet right there. Oh, no. Oh, no. Asuka's tying her up. I think we know what's coming. The move that won her the championship and retained her the championship twice now. The Asuka lock sends victory to the way of the women's champion yet again. Saray giving this matchup all she had here tonight, but unfortunately her second match on the main roster does not go her way. An impressive outing. She threw everything in the kitchen sink at the Empress of Tomorrow in just these last few minutes. But Asuka, as we mentioned, on the most dominant role that she has been in several years. And we're not sure if there's any woman in the division that's going to be able to take down your current WWE Women's Champion of the World. Asuka is victorious, but the question lies now, who is going to be next to step up to the Empress of Tomorrow and challenge her for the WWE Women's Championship? The action continues on Monday Night Raw tonight live from Baltimore, Maryland at the Royal Farms Arena with NXT competitor Fabian Eichner. Going one-on-one -on -one with the Prince Finn Balor. This is Finn Balor's first matchup since losing to Pete Dunne at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. Of course, the Prince looking to come out on top, but Fabian Eichner absolutely looking to show up and show out here tonight over the Prince. Fabian Eichner throwing a little bit of everything and more at the Prince Finn Balor. Well, we know how aggressive Balor has been over the last number of months. He does not take kindly to loss. And you know when you're going to step inside the ring with the Prince, it's going to be a war among wars. And unfortunately for Fabian Eichner, he put up a great effort, but in the end, the Prince Finn Balor walking away at Monday Night Raw tonight with his hand raised. Question lies, what's going to be next for the Prince here on Monday Night Raw? The action in the women's division continues as a new alliance has evidently been formed between NXT's Dakota Kai now here on the main roster with Bailey in her corner. As she took on Casey Catanzaro in Catanzaro's first appearance in a couple of weeks, a former challenger of Asuka looking to bounce back since that loss. But again, Dakota Kai coming up from NXT here tonight. Evidently aligned with Bailey here on Monday Night Raw. In another women's division matchup, Casey Catanzaro throwing everything she could, but Dakota Kai dominant in this contest and was able to get the win here tonight on Raw. Still to come, it's Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre. But right here, right now, the phenomenal AJ Styles is in action live from the heart of Baltimore. For the first time since Extreme Rules, AJ Styles back inside the ring. He may have came up short on pay-per-view, but tonight on Raw, he's looking to get that hand raised once again. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Gainesville, Georgia, weighing in at 218 pounds, the Phenomenal AJ Styles. Well, it's been a rocky few months for AJ Styles. It's about all the way back, excuse us, at June at SummerSlam, where AJ Styles lost the WWE Championship to the Rated R Superstar Edge. Of course, AJ had another opportunity to regain the gold at Extreme Rules. A member of that five-man elimination challenge for the gold. But of course, the phenomenal one coming up short in that contest. But AJ set for action here tonight on Monday Night Raw, and it's a very interesting scenario. The words we have gathered, the information we have gathered about this contest is evidently AJ Styles was challenged to a match here tonight by none other than the giant, colossal Omas. Not sure what the motive is for Omas 
to challenge AJ Styles for a matchup. But nonetheless, AJ Styles ain't going to turn down a challenge, and we are set for this one-on-one -on -one match here on Raw. And his opponent from Lagos, Nigeria, weighing in at 400 pounds, Omos! So as we mentioned, the colossal Omos, possibly just looking to get back in the winning ways. Challenging AJ Styles to this matchup tonight of all people. Omos targeting some of the top dogs here in the WWE. Of course, the last time we saw this giant was on main event a couple of weeks ago when he went one-on-one -on -one for the first time ever against the franchise John Cena. John Cena giving Omos his first singles loss on that night. But before then, Omos was undefeated in singles action. Every time this man has stepped foot in the ring, and honestly, win or lose for the Colossal One, he has been dominant, and he has been destructive. And whatever the motive is for challenging AJ Styles here tonight, I'm sure that giant colossal beast in the ring is looking to do the same amount of damage and cause the same amount of destruction, no matter the opponent, no matter the location. Raw is live tonight from the Royals Farms Arena in Baltimore, and it's AJ Styles versus Omos, the phenomenal versus the colossal. Let's get things underway. Should be a very interesting contest. It's the speed and agility, agility of, excuse me, of AJ Styles there versus the strength and size of Omos. And AJ Styles able to get Omos out of the ring. Omos is dazed under the outside right here. The phenomenal one, obviously the veteran. Omos is dazed. AJ Styles gonna take advantage while he can. Look at that phenomenal forearm. Over the top rope, takes the big man down. And as we are mentioned, the speed, agility, and the veteran status of the phenomenal AJ Styles for the strength and size of Omos. It's a very interesting pairing there. Inside of this ring, AJ Styles is able to get the upper hand right up to the bell, taking Omos down, but you see that might have just pissed off the colossal one here tonight. AJ Styles has got to watch in this contest. Omos can grab you from out of nowhere, throw you halfway across the ring, slam you down on the canvas, and absolutely make you eat your heart out in defeat. Omos is beating down on AJ Styles here, and again, we got to wonder what the motive was for Omos challenging specifically AJ Styles to a matchup here tonight. It may have just been a case as we mentioned of Omos, look at that. Big time slam, very Mark Henry-esque of the big man there. But again, as we were mentioning, it may have just been a case of Omos looking to target a big, big time superstar here in the WWE to try to get back into winning ways. Picked up that loss to John Cena. Was John Cena after losing Austin Theory last week, not in the arena here tonight. Not sure when we'll see the franchise back, but Omos here, look at this, running boot scrape to the phenomenal one. And Omos may be getting the victory that we presume he's searching for here, but AJ Styles gets the shoulder up. The big man, as we mentioned, was undefeated in singles action before his matchup with John Cena. And assuming that is why he challenged AJ Styles here tonight, that colossal one just looking to make his name off the phenomenal one's behalf. AJ Styles has been in trouble since that opening onslaught from the Phenomenal One. Knocked Omos to the outside of the ring, hit that Phenomenal forearm, but ever since then, momentum has shifted back to the big man in this contest here tonight. As he is just kind of ragged on AJ Styles here. And AJ, look at that, nice counter, headbutt. Uncharacteristic of AJ Styles, but any means necessary to take down the big man. Nice chop, Ace and Seguri, Omos still staggering on his legs here. AJ Styles got to unload. That's some classic offense, but it does not take Omos down. AJ went for the clothesline, and Omos with that big boot. They had just turned the lights out on Styles. But no, AJ still got fight left in him. Omos shocked he didn't get the victory there on AJ Styles, but... We know how tough AJ Styles is inside of the ring. A three-time WWE champion in his career. A former United States champion, intercontinental champion as well. The Phenomenal One's had an illustrious career for the last six years here in the WWE, and it's going to continue week after week for the Phenomenal One. It could be a big-time victory for himself here tonight. You have to defeat Omos as he takes Omos down with a nice forearm there. AJ's got to continue the momentum. Oh, look at this. Backbreaker able to take Omos off. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bobby Lashley? The hell's the almighty one? 
Why, why are we playing it? Is this a... Is this a, a, a mistake? What, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bobby Lashley's in the ring. What the hell is going on? AJ... Bobby Lashley's in the ring. Ref, turn your damn back. Come on. Oh, come on, ref. Don't act like you didn't see. Lashley just lay out. I just, you gotta be kidding me. What the hell is this? What the? I'm sorry, I don't have the words. I don't know what the hell we just saw. AJ Styles build the momentum over Omos and then Bobby Lashley rears his head? What the hell can we put to piece together here? Omos just slipping into the victory thanks to the almighty appearance of Bobby Lashley. I mean, I, I, Bobby Lashley and AJ Styles, they got history with each other, dating all the way back to Backlash in April, where AJ Styles defeated Lashley for the WWE Championship, but that was months ago. And Bobby Lashley, evidently, I, I guess he's got some scores to settle, but he just handed that victory on a silver platter to the colossal Omos. A minor concussion for Isaiah Swerve Scott took him out of the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, but now he gets the championship opportunity he was waiting for. It's Isaiah versus Ricochet for the Cruiserweight Championship on your next episode of Main Event Universe Mode. And coming up next week here on Monday Night Raw, the WWE Championship Eliminator is going to continue. We're going to see Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre in moments, but next week, Mustafa Ali versus Rob Van Dam for the first time ever. Winner is going to Judgment Day. And speaking of the Judgment Day pay-per-view, the main event has been signed. The Rated R Superstar is coming back for his WWE Championship over the man who took it away from an Extreme Rules. All day, Austin Theory. In the midst of his first WWE Championship reign after defeating John Cena last week, his second defense against the Rated R Superstar one-on-one -on -one at Judgment Day. A big time main event sign for the pay-per-view, but we're gonna find out right here, right now, who is gonna be one half of the WWE Championship Eliminator number one contenders contest coming up on our next pay-per-view in October. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the rings from St. Louis, Missouri. Weighing in at 250 pounds, the Viper, Randy Orton. And excuse my inaccuracy, Judgment Day will be in the September pay-per-view slot. Coming up next month will be the Judgment Day pay-per-view. But back to the action here is the Apex Predator, Randy Orton, makes his way to the ring. And this man, we've got a lot of questions and... Just concerns regarding this man. So that extreme rules where we officially saw the implosion of RK Bro. And Randy Orton went one on one with his former tag team partner Riddle. And the Falls Count Anywhere matchup. And Riddle did his best to do a number on the Apex Predator on that night and get revenge for putting him on the shelf over two months ago. But unfortunately for Riddle. He fell to the RKO, but it wasn't just the RKO that Randy Orton delivered. After a brawl all over the arena, Randy Orton pulled out a sledgehammer from underneath the ring, issued a beatdown on Riddle with the very hammer, knocking him out cold, and RKO on top of the hammer. After absolutely just violent and disgusting acts from Randy Orton, awarded him that victory, if you even want to call it that, at Extreme Rules. But it's the recent victories of all four men that are competing in the WWE Championship Eliminator, the reasons why they're getting these opportunities. And as for this man, he's hot off the heels of a no-holds-barred collision with the Celtic Warrior Sheamus at Extreme Rules and Drew McIntyre. Opportunity has been slipping through this man's hands for months. But now with a new opportunity at stake, a new focus, the WWE Championship. The Scottish psychopath after riding the momentum of Extreme Rules. I'm sure it's looking to keep that momentum going. Come out swinging here tonight and punch his ticket to the Judgment Day pay-per-view. Main event time. And his opponent from Air Scotland, weighing in at 254 pounds, Drew McIntyre. 
You remember back in April, where Drew McIntyre was a participant in the number one contenders tournament to determine the WWE Championship's contender for the Backlash pay-per-view. Of course, that ended up being AJ Styles, but Drew McIntyre made its way to the finals of that tournament and came up short. Both at Money in the Bank and SummerSlam, Drew McIntyre had opportunity to become the Intercontinental Champion once again in his career. Unfortunately, that came up short for McIntyre. But tonight, a new opportunity rears its head, and it's time to kick the door down for one of these competitors. The road to Judgment Day will be paved here in Baltimore. It's your main event, and it's a WWE Championship Eliminator. Here we go with McIntyre versus Orton. The winner of this contest gonna face the winner of the first time ever matchup next week here on Raw. And the whole damn show, Rob Van Dam, has been 2-0 since making his return to the WWE. At Extreme Rules, a victory over Seth Rollins, a victory over the Disciple Murphy as well. Rob Van Dam set to go one-on-one -on -one with Mustafa Ali. And Ali's story has been very well documented over the last couple of months. It's really the summer of Ali. Really just rewriting a new chapter in his career. Absolutely, there's maybe nobody more in the winning ways than Mustafa Ali these last number of months. All these opportunities, whether you like these men or not, AKA Randy Orton, are absolutely earned. And the road to Judgment Day is gonna be earned here tonight and next week. What about that WWE Championship matchup that was just signed moments ago? Austin Theory, he won the championship at Extreme Rules in that five-man elimination challenge. Of course, that matchup came down to himself and then WWE Champion, the Rated R Superstar Edge. Austin Theory catching Edge off guard. He was going for the spear. Theory got him and caught him in that TKO maneuver. And Austin Theory shocking the world and walking out of Seattle, the new WWE Champion. Of course, it was last week here on Monday Night Raw where the rivalry between Theory and John Cena really came to a screeching halt. It was their third meeting. Of course, the first one was at SummerSlam. The second meeting was in that tag team matchup with the Raw after SummerSlam. They were both competitors in the Extreme Rules five-man challenge as well, but they went one-on-one -on -one last week in an awesome main event here on Monday Night Raw. An exhausting contest. A 20-minute battle between Cena and Theory for the WWE Championship, and Theory tried pulling a couple tricks on John Cena throughout that match. Tried getting him counted out. Tried using weapons as a distraction to throw Cena off his game, but in the end, whether you like him or not, Austin Theory did leave Monday Night Raw still the WWE Champion. Of course, his second championship reign is going to come, or excuse me, cha second championship defense is going to come. And he goes one-on-one -on -one with Edge. It ain't going to be a five-man challenge for the rated R superstar, Austin Theory. It's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, put up or shut up. Somebody's going to leave Judgment Day with the WWE Championship in a couple of weeks' time. I'm sure it's going to be a hell of a first time ever matchup. The second time those two men will be in the ring with each other. First came in the Raw after SummerSlam and Tag Team Battle. Oh man, Randy Orton with a nice shot to Drew McIntyre there. And McIntyre with an A. Again, the first time ever. It'll be one-on-one -on -one between Theory and Edge. That's coming up at Judgment Day. But let's focus on the action at our hands right now. McIntyre and Randy Orton. These two men, a long history with each other. Dating back to 2020 when they were battling here on Monday Night Raw over the WWE Championship. Which was in the midst, of course, of McIntyre's first and then second WWE Championship runs. These two men with history with each other. It's been some time since they've went one-on-one. -on -one. But now with the opportunity at stake to become the number one contender for the WWE Championship, you're going to throw caution into the win. And that's what McIntyre could be looking to do here. Uncharacteristic for the big man. Clothesline from the top takes Randy Orton down. It's going to be interesting to see the strategies throughout this contest. Every time we talk about McIntyre against his opponents, we always mention the size and the strength, which he still does have over Randy Orton. There's one thing that Randy Orton's got over Drew McIntyre in this match, or any match for that matter, is the mind games. The cold, calculated maneuvers and strategy of the Apex Predator. He applies each and every time he's inside of that ring. It'll be something to look out for in this contest. And of course, that RKO from the Viper can strike at any given moment. 
McIntyre knows that very well due to these men's history. I'm sure he's going to be looking at that RKO out of every corner he can here tonight. I'm sure McIntyre overall is going to want to avoid that move at any means necessary. But Drew McIntyre just coming off extreme rules in that no-holds-barred matchup with Sheamus. An issue that was really escalated by the Celtic Warrior himself after McIntyre was pinned in the triple threat matchup at SummerSlam for the Intercontinental Championship. Sheamus wanting retribution over McIntyre for losing the Intercontinental Championship off his behalf. Those men have really taken to a new level these last number of weeks. And again, they've been at extreme rules, no holds barred, beat the living hell out of each other under the lights in Seattle. But Drew McIntyre getting his first win on pay-per-view in several months with that victory over Sheamus. In the last few months for McIntyre, when it comes to big-time moments, big-time matches, the opportunities, as we mentioned when McIntyre was walking his way down the aisle here tonight, have just been slipping through the fingers of the Scottish psychopath. You hate to mention it, Drew McIntyre is a phenomenal competitor inside that ring, but the results are the results, and the results show that Drew McIntyre and championships are on the line, or opportunities are honestly on the line. He just hasn't been able to get the job done in several months. We mentioned the loss to AJ Styles in the number one contenders tournament a couple of months ago, which really started the whole, I don't want to call it a downward spiral because there's been wins in between, but really started the whole situation for Drew McIntyre. He fought back. He was able to get an Intercontinental Championship matchup by winning a Battle Royal, which led him to the Money in the Bank pay-per-view against Sheamus. Unfortunately for McIntyre, Sheamus came up the victor that night. Of course, he earned another championship opportunity at SummerSlam with Pete Dunne involved in a triple threat matchup. And unfortunately for McIntyre, he was not only the loser on that night, but he was the one pinned in the triple threat match. Which then again, as we mentioned, led to the situation with Sheamus and McIntyre. Credit where it's due, rose to the occasion. May have doubted some naysayers. Back on August the 7th at Extreme Rules. It's a battle between him and Sheamus. Old friends, current foes, they know each other so well. And McIntyre was the better man on that night, but Orton may be the better man right now off that Olympic slam that drew McIntyre, but McIntyre gets the shoulder up. But as for Randy Orton, we talked about his matchup with Riddle at Extreme Rules, that Falls Can Anywhere matchup, which honestly just became very disturbing to watch near the end of things. Wait a minute, we gotta cut ourselves off here. McIntyre's in the corner. He's scouting a dazed Randy Orton. Claymore, kick, and he nails it flush. Oh, but Randy Orton getting the shoulder up here. McIntyre hitting the Claymore. Orton able to survive it. Shocking to see, but Randy Orton to his feet. McIntyre expecting him to be there. Well, McIntyre could have been going for a maneuver there. Orton now battling him out. Neck breaker into the clothesline to the back of the head. McIntyre's got to watch here as Randy Orton slips into a new gear. As we were going to mention, his matchup at Extreme Rules, the Falls Can Anywhere implosion between the two former members of RK Bro, which just got very sick and twisted and disturbing to watch in the end. Randy Orton with that sledgehammer, the RKO beating the hell of his old tag team partner. And whether we like it or not, that's the reason Randy Orton is here tonight. But Orton is, hasn't lost a match in quite a bit. If my records are correct. I believe he's five and one over the last two months or so here in the WWE. Fight being brought to the outside. Orton throwing McIntyre right into the announce table. Gut first. Enough to knock the wind out. He has McIntyre here. Trying to brawl with the Viper. This thing's going to get dangerous on the outside, especially with the arsenals of these two competitors. Got to watch an RKO out of nowhere on the floor. McIntyre, or excuse me, Orton's got to watch not getting thrown around, thrown around by Drew. Whether it's on the outside or in the ring where these two men have fall right now, but Orton back in control. McIntyre's day is not sure for it. RKO! RKO! And McIntyre, luckily for him, saved by the ropes, but Randy Orton with that RKO to the Scottish Psychopath there. And a classic scoop slam by Randy Orton into the cover. He goes on the Scottish Psychopath again, but McIntyre gets his shoulder up. Both these men already pulling out their best tricks in this main event contest. Orton survives the Claymore. McIntyre 
In the right place at the right time, hand underneath the ropes. Rope break able to survive the RKO. And we're back at a stalemate here in our main event. It's Monday Night Raw. It's Universe Mode episode number 46. We are live from the Royal Farms Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. And we are in the midst of a WWE Championship Eliminator matchup between Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton. The winner is going to head to the Judgment Day pay-per-view in September to battle the winner of next week's contest between Mustafa Ali and Rob Van Dam. And of course, the winner of that match at Judgment Day will officially become the new number one contender to the WWE Championship following that pay-per-view. Orton shoot McIntyre off. McIntyre eating the turnbuckles there. And the Viper going to look to strike hard knee to the side of the head. Orton scouting. Oh, he could be looking for yet another RKO here. McIntyre's got to watch. Orton already hit it once, but it's steady Alex for the drop kick. And it could be some mind games from Randy Orton there. He's got to know that McIntyre's going to be expecting the RKO. He can't go for it every time, or McIntyre's going to have it scouted. Orton throwing some different offense at the Scottish Psychopath. Try to throw him off his game. Interesting strategy from the Viper. And McIntyre on the top rope. McIntyre with the counter. Grabbing a hold of Randy Orton. Picking him up in the air. So where the strength of McIntyre comes into play of each and every competitor he's in the ring with. Oh, and Orton shooting up there. Look at that, Orton. A new level for the Apex Predator here tonight. Take it out, McIntyre. Orton just shooting up here. He knows the opportunity that's at stake. Whether you like Randy Orton or not, he is set to absorb any punishment he can here tonight to try to get back in the ranks for the WWE Championship. And McIntyre smelling the sense of urgency there. Smelling blood in the water. And grabbing a hold of Randy Orton and hanging him up in the top rope. And Baltimore is getting a tree here tonight between these two competitors in our main event on Monday Night Raw. And Orton gets the shoulder up. And again, as we mentioned prior to this contest, our next episode of Universe Mode, WWE Main Event, going to feature a championship matchup as well. Isaiah Swerve Scott going to go one-on-one -on -one with the one and only Ricochet for the Cruiserweight Championship coming up on Main Event. What a matchup that is going to be. Their third meeting in the last number of months, the rubber match between those two competitors. Is Orton here? A nice counter on Drew McIntyre. German suplex. Orton using all the strength he had to get the bigger competitor over ahead and down to the canvas. The McIntyre counters. We're really starting to go back and forth here between these two competitors. So teeter totter continues to shift. Neither of these men looking to give an inch in this championship eliminator. McIntyre grabbing a hold of Orton. Orton's days. McIntyre hanging him up on the top rope. And the Scottish psychopath. Looking to piece together some maneuvers here and sending Randy Orton for a ride. The strength being used to the advantage as the bigger competitor heads to the top. Going for the axe hammer. Orton tried knocking him off, and I think he did. Orton also crashed into the turnbuckle. You saw we were at a stalemate there. McIntyre trying to get the upper hand while he can. And Orton, look at that. Inner predicament and McIntyre slamming himself down on the competitor and Randy Orton with the drop kick. Back and forth, we continue to go in this contest. The momentum not staying in the corner of one competitor nor the other. And Orton beating down on Drew McIntyre here. We talked about some of Randy Orton's recent victories. Goes back well over a month. So Randy Orton's got victories over Cedric Alexander, Shelton Benjamin, MVP, and Bobby Lashley, all the members of the Hurt Business. And then, of course, at Extreme Rules, a victory over Riddle. Orton's only blemish came to the current WWE champion, Austin Theory, on Monday Night Raw a couple of weeks ago when Riddle had returned and took Randy Orton's eye off the ball on that night. McIntyre trying to build some momentum here with these men riding the high off Extreme Rules. Nobody looking to... Get thrown off the path here tonight, and McIntyre hanging up Randy Orton. Snake guy's there, and I'll stop in a mud hole, and the Apex Predator is the Scottish Psychopath. McIntyre into the cover. Is he going to Judgment Day here? But Orton's still in this fight. Man, what a matchup. We are in some deep waters in this contest between Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton. Claymore kick out of nowhere. And you may be able to count to 20 off the second Claymore kick in the match. No, Randy Orton. Orton somehow 
some way able to get the shoulder up. How the hell is the Apex Predator still in this contest? Not one, but two Claymore kicks. That second coming out of absolute nowhere and somehow Randy Orton is still surviving in this main event here tonight. The fight getting taken to the outside. McIntyre's down after an onslaught from the Viper. It's now or never for Randy Orton to build some momentum. You just smell it out of the Apex Predator here. McIntyre eating a brutal neck breaker on the outside of the ring. Oh, and Orton going to continue the fight. Dropping the knee on McIntyre there. And Orton's got to know that this match is nearing close to a final fall. And he wants that victory to be in his favor. McIntyre's down. Orton could be looking for the count out victory here. Wait a minute. Orton heading back out to the outside. Orton's not done with the punishment. Sure, Randy Orton would love to get this victory no matter what. Sending McIntyre into the steel steps, now heading back into the ring. And I think Randy Orton is saying, screw trying to get the pinfall right now. I'll take the count out. We know how tough McIntyre is. He's already up. He's getting to his feet. McIntyre wants to win this the hard-fought way. Pinning Randy Orton's shoulders to the mat. Randy Orton, RKO out of nowhere. McIntyre somehow gets the shoulder up. You gotta be kidding me. And Orton's pissed off at that. He thought that was a three count. Now he's beating the hell out of McIntyre. How the hell are these two men still in this match? The drive, the will to succeed. The need to become WWE Champion. Driving these two competitors in this main event here tonight. All for an opportunity just to enter a number one contender's matchup at Judgment Day. And Orton not able to put McIntyre away off that RKO. The second RKO, two Claymore kicks as well, and somehow these men are still into it. And we're at a stalemate here. You see the standoff, Orton trying to get the momentum in his corner, be the aggressor here, and an uppercut to the back of the neck. These two men may still be in this fight, but you know they gotta be feeling the damage off all the offense. Plus feeling each other's best maneuvers in their arsenals. And back and forth we go here. These two men are just slugging it out in your main event of Monday Night Raw. McIntyre slamming Randy Orton nearly through the canvas and into the cover goes McIntyre. Victory headed to Judgment Day, not just yet. Man, Orton still in this contest, and Orton McIntyre gonna watch his back here. It's Randy Orton springing up yet again. The fight continues. Orton with a Luthes press. So Mustafa Ali and Rob Van Dam are locking eyes on this matchup, scouting what could be one of their competitors for Judgment Day. And McIntyre slapping Orton's offense away in a power bomb. Orton still into this. Old school collar and elbow. Randy Orton with the swing neck breaker. McIntyre still getting to his feet. Gotta admire the will and the guts of these two competitors. And you see nothing left of the Scottish psychopath. Warren whipping him off, and McIntyre's momentum just sends him over the top rope, crashing to the floor down below. Two. Warren just. I'm sure he'd be satisfied with that count-out victory. McIntyre still trying to hang in this fight, though. Orton knocks him off his seat with the drop kick, but you can't keep Drew McIntyre down. And McIntyre again. Good look for a suplex here on Randy Orton. Drives him to the canvas. But now Randy Orton counters. The momentum just shifting back and forth these last couple of minutes in this contest. Neither man looking to give an inch. Man, what a battle. This may be one of the best, if not the best battle, in McIntyre and Randy Orton's history with each other as Orton drops yet another neckbreaker on the Scottish Psychopath. The brawl continuing. Live here from Baltimore. What a man event it has been. Just imagine what Mustafa Ali and RBD are going to do next week inside that very ring. McIntyre, what a left hand on the Viper. Orton's down. McIntyre may have just looking to knock out Randy Orton there. It could do it. Simple but effective. But 
Orton gets the shoulder up. You gotta wonder what the WWE locker room's thinking just on top of Mustafa Ali and Rob Van Dam. Watching these two Hall of Fame worthy competitors battling it out just for the opportunity to have a chance to become the number one contender at the WWE Championship. That is how important one wins or losses are here in the WWE, but that is how important being the WWE Champion is and holding the most prestigious prize in the business today. McIntyre, look at this, gut wrench. Suplex to Randy Orton. How is that not a knockout blow? McIntyre eyeing up the Viper here. McIntyre going to the cover on Randy. Looking for the victory, but Orton gets the shoulder up again. Back and forth we go. And somehow these men are still staggering at the I believe is nearing, if not already, 20 minutes in this main event matchup. A fight among fights. A battle for all the stakes here tonight. And another gut wrench suplex. This time McIntyre sits out with the power bomb. Orton tried shooting up. McIntyre here catches on future Shaq DDT. And there's no way you're getting up from that. Randy Orton barely rolling his shoulder off the canvas. You have got to be kidding me. Future Shaq DDT and McIntyre here. He's going to start just repeating his maneuvers and just trying to throw everything he's already thrown at Randy Orton to try to add up the pressure, add up the difficulty to try to keep Orton down. But Orton's going to do the same. McIntyre's down. Randy Orton stalking his prey. Will it be the Apex Predator? Will it be the Scottish Psychopath? Who is going to be on their way to Judgment Day? McIntyre gets caught with an elbow from the Viper. Randy Orton dropping that vintage knee on the Scottish Psychopath here. Somehow these men are still in this main event matchup. It's Universe Mode Episode 46, Monday Night Raw. And these two are giving us a matchup to remember for years to come. And Orton could be looking to finally wrap things up in this contest. RKO, no! McIntyre pushes, Claymore, no! Orton counters! Both men going for the third shot that they could fire in this contest with their finishing maneuvers. Both men had him scouted. And somehow the fight rolls on. Oh, McIntyre's dazed, you see it in his eyes. Randy Orton's shooting him off here. And Orton's got something in mind, bringing Drew McIntyre to the top rope. Orton. Oh, McIntyre, oh, wait a minute here. He could be looking for an elevated DDT vintage Randy Orton. He's won championships with that maneuver in the past, and he gets the victory. A shocking conclusion to this contest. But man, whether we like that man Randy Orton or not, you got to give credit where it's due. What a freaking battle. And there you see it. Judgment Day. The Viper is coming. And next week on Raw, we're going to find out who's going to face Randy Orton on pay-per-view when it's Mustafa Ali versus Rob Van Dam in the second match of the WWE Championship Eliminator. A first-time ever matchup meets the Apex Predator at Judgment Day in September. What a main event between the Scottish Psychopath and the Viper. Randy Orton comes out on top. An incredible night here on Monday Night Raw. We'll see you on WWE 2K22 Universe Mode 47 for main event. Thank you, and good night, everybody. Pace on when I chase like that. Yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise. You can hate on that. I don't play both sides. Doing me no cap. I'm a ride.